This is a basic demo of Code Grinder. I've got it set up for a course with a problem that uh, comes from CS1410. So I'm going to launch, launch it here. Uh, this one, you can see the instructions are over here on the left. It tells me to write a class named point that stores a couple of values. And so I've got a little starter code here. Uh, I can go ahead and start working on it. Um, I'm going to cheat and copy the solution from off screen here. So let's see, I'll go ahead and grab this much. So here I've got a definition of the class and I've also got the constructor and two getter methods. Uh, so this is just a normal editor. It gives you some ability to do things like collapse function definitions or class definitions and stuff like that. It does, it's a little subtle here I guess, but it's got some syntax highlighting. Uh, so enough for doing some basic coding. Uh, it, it automatically saves. We've got a save button too in case they're, they're worried. It saves about every 30 seconds or so in the background. But I can click on grade and this will run some automatic grading. And there are a few things to note here. Um, one, there's this terminal down at the bottom that shows exactly what was going on. So these commands, we've got this little prompt here. This is the command that it typed uh, to, or that it executed to run the unit test. This problem is defined with some unit tests. And you can see the output in the console here down in the terminal. They passed two tests and they got errors on two tests. And then there's some more details dumped out by the unit test framework. And then over here on the left, that's summarized in a, you know, a little bit prettier, I guess. Uh, you can see the, there's some details here. When I look at test point three, I can click on this arrow to see some more context to see why it failed. And this is just taken from the terminal, but um, but it isolates the parts they're interested in. We can see it says point instance has no attribute set x. If we go back to the instructions, uh, over here in the left tab, there's kind of some navigation. So if I go to the instructions, it tells me to set up um, set methods, set x and set y, and one of the tests uh, tests that, and since it didn't find the setters, it, uh, the test failed. And I'll just go back to my results. There's also this button right here on some of the test results that says go to line. And that will actually take me to the exact place in the test where it failed. So this has opened up a separate tab. You can see it's got a lock on it. This one I can just read. I, I don't change it. The student doesn't change it. This is the actual unit test code that was running. And this is the line where that failure occurred, where it created, uh, if you can look at line 18 here, they created a point. Line 19, it tried to call it set x method, and that's the point at which it failed. But we want the students to be able to see the unit tests, see what code is actually running and failing on there so they can kind of recreate those tests in, on their own um, or have a good idea of what's, what they still need to do. Um, over here, the third option on the navigation bar is files. This is the complete list of files for this problem. Point.py is the, the one they've been working on and here in the tests directory is the unit test, um, which is just a single file in this case. Um, for different problems, it could be more files than that, but I usually try to keep them simple. So if we go back to point.py, I'm just going to close the tab for the unit test. Um, we can see some other options we can do. I can say just run, which runs the code. Um, in this case, not much happened because there's nothing. All it does is define the class. But it runs it. If you look down here, you can see it's python minus i point.py. So it ran the code and then dumped me into an interactive session. So I could do things like create a new point and call its methods and just try things out generally. I want to encourage students to, to work with the interactive uh, shell, Python shell and get used to that. And so this gives them an easy way to do that. Um, and then when I'm done, I can quit through the Python way and it goes away or I could have clicked on that cancel button as well. Um, I can say debug, and this will launch it in a debugger using PDB, the, the standard command line Python debugger. Uh, so here I can do things like single step through the code, and again this code doesn't do much, so it's not terribly exciting. I'm just going to click cancel. Um, a couple other options, they can click on shell, and they just get a Python shell. It doesn't load any code or anything, but another good way for them to just be able to uh, try things out. It's always handy to have one of those uh, at hand. Um, there's also some others we've been experimenting with. Uh, I'm just going to go and do some non-standard spacing things here. 
I can click on check style, and this runs PEP8. Uh, PEP8 is the the name of the Python style guide, the official like standard Python style guide. And PEP8 is a tool that goes to check to see if you have any simple violations of spacing uh, based on that. Um, oops, we've had a little glitch there. Um, let me just do that again to show you. So here's an example, and I've told this is on verbose mode, so it's saying here on line three, character 22, uh, there's missing white space after a comma. And then it goes on to explain the, the style guidelines there in more detail. I've also got another option here called fix style that will apply as many of those as it can mechanically. And so you can see it's corrected those, those kind of clumpy uh, spacing things I had before. Um, let's just create a, a list here. say fix style on that, it automatically saves whenever I click one of those options and it's gonna go ahead and space that out a little bit more. So that's something we're playing with um, to try and get students to um, make their code a little more readable and give them some options to take some of the tedium out of that process. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. Um, and to finish this class definition, I'm gonna go ahead and copy those again. I'll fix my style, they want the style guide calls for a blank line between each function definition and a top level two, two blank spaces. Click on grade, and this will grade the latest version of it, and this one passes all four of the unit tests. And so now we have the option to move on to the next step. The instructions change. Sometimes the files will change. In this case, there were no changes in the files, but the instructions tell it to uh, create a new add points method. Or uh, actually, I think it's just a function. Uh, that uses the points class. And so, again, I've got a solution ready at hand already, so I'm just gonna, oops, see if I can copy that in and grade it. So right now I've got it turned on. It actually does that PEP8 check before grading and won't let them continue if it doesn't pass. We'll probably disable that. I, just experimenting with it, it's, it's a little annoying though. Um, but I can click fix style to, to fix it. We may make it also so you can configure that on a per problem basis or have a default and let you override it. I think it might be useful for early CS 1400 students where they really do some atrocious things with, with spacing. And then hopefully we can relax things a little later and get rid of the annoying factor and, and they'll maybe still do a decent job. So now I'll click at grade. So again, it just wanted two spaces between those two top level definitions. Passes all the tests. That was the last step for this one. Um, if I was a student, that would have posted my grade back to Canvas. Every time I click grade, it does that. Since I'm not a student and I don't have a grade entry, it, it doesn't do that. But once you're finished, it pops up this little survey. There are four questions. Uh, we're going to try and get the students to complete this after every problem they do, um, asking if there were the instructions clear. Was the assignment easy or difficult? Um, was it helpful or was this just a waste of time? And was it interesting or was it kind of boring? And I imagine especially a lot of the early drill assignments will be kind of boring. And then they submit that survey and, and they're done. Um, and so that's it, those are the basic features. Uh, so if they're left here, they can still go back and work with interactive sessions and things like that if they want to, but those are the basics of how the, the system, how you interact with the system. One other important one I want to note is down here in the lower left corner there's a button that you can collapse the instruction panel and that gives you a lot more space in your, your editor and your terminal as well. And then you can always get it back by clicking on one of these tabs or by just clicking on the um, expand button. So I hope that's helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. We're still working on it. I'm still working on it and there will be some changes I'm sure. But those are the basics.